So after you left uh, North Texas, what was next? You were talking about breaking into the education scene. And yep. How right. did that go for you? I did a, a lot of uh, clinics and guest appearances. Um, started out as a, uh, an unofficial King clinician. I always, I always saw in magazines and stuff, people like Jimmy Panko with Chicago and, and other heroes and JJ, and I would say, King clinician. I thought, man, I got a king horn. I'm a king clinician too. <laughs> so I just started billing myself as that. And, and then finally, uh, the folks at King, I met them at some convention or something. They said, you know, you should just officially be a king clinician. So I started doing that. And um, uh, now I play an Edwards horn. But that's a, a whole other story. It was a really cool story. Um, so I was doing that kind of thing and meeting a lot of people and, and what a great experience that has been throughout my whole career, the whole uh, guest artist, master class, clinician circuit, as it were. Um, but uh, my first teaching job was at University of Texas uh, at Arlington. Hmm. It was under uh, uh, Bill Snodgrass. Sure. An, an amazing force of nature, Bill Snodgrass. <laughs> I, I, I need a T-shirt that says, I survived Bill Snodgrass. Right, yeah. He's, well, he's relocated here to Missouri. That's yeah, right. Yeah, just about yeah. an hour from here. The last time I saw him was at the, uh, the Allstate thing that I did. Right, here. right, uh, yes. And uh, he's another beautiful, beautiful person. Um, a very funny, gruff exterior, but he's the teddy bear of teddy bears. And uh, I learned a lot from him, like... When a faculty meeting is called, you should you should show up. <laughs> right. You know, so <laughs> little basic things like that. But he's a he's a great friend, and and maybe that's in music. The, that's one of the coolest things is that our our mentors, our Yodas, be, become great friends. Mm -hmm. uh, they they are even in the years that they are your mentor, and, and probably they never leave that status. You know, I learn every time I see Neil, every time I see Bill. I mean, any of these people, I still Raul Jerome, I still see him. I'm still learning a lot from these guys. Sure. Um, so I was at Arlington for a while, and then uh, a job opened up, uh, University of Wisconsin Whitewater, and I wanted to try out uh, my hand at running a program myself. Uh, I was assistant director with Bill, um, so I went up there and stayed for 17 years. Uh, wow. My daughter was born up there. Uh, it was my first marriage, and when the divorce happened, I decided to stay there best advice I ever got my, my mother. I was talking to her and I said, you know, maybe I should go to New York now or something. And when the divorce happened, she goes, are you crazy? <laughs> you stay there with your daughter. And yeah. I said, well, you know, yeah, you're right. So I did, and that was the best thing ever. Uh, my daughter is brilliant. Her name is Amber, and she's a very talented theater actress. Oh, very cool. Yeah, a good career ahead of her, I think. Uh, hilarious. Man, she's funny. But... Um, so yeah, I stayed there for about 17 years. I was director of jazz. I was the only, I was like one man show kind of deal. I know the feeling. Yes, <laughs> I know you know how that goes. So that's, that's plenty of work, yes. plenty of work. They say your, your load is 12 hours and here's the 58 that you'll be teaching. Right, you know? exactly. So okay. <laughs> but uh, that was very cool and uh, met a lot of people and uh, Wisconsin is so beautiful. Um, but that was the next thing that happened. It was in those years that I hooked up with Doc Severinsen. A person from North Texas, uh, Carolyn Kafer, got me an audition. When when Doc's band, uh, when the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson ended, and then Jay Leno started, you know, before for Jimmy now and everything that's happening now, um, they the the band was no longer going to be on the show as all the new hosts bring in their new their own band. Um, so uh, the guys in the band, Doc said, well, let's just take it on the road and still do it. So there were about three or four people that didn't want to tour. Uh, and so those spots needed to be filled, and I got one of them. Wow. Uh, which was amazing, because that uh, was a band of, of heroes. That was like the Justice League on the road. Right, exactly. The Avengers yeah. go on the road. Right. So that was, that was an incredible experience, and that was during those years when I was in Wisconsin. Okay, so, so which of the guys from the original band went out? I mean, was Snooki on the band? Yeah, yeah um, it was in the trumpet section was unbelievable, and I... First started, it was uh, Connie Condoli uh, and Snooky Young were in the section, and uh, uh, I can't remember who was playing lead then. Uh, uh, unbelievable section. Just those two guys would freak right. me out just being around them. John Bainbridge was still there from the show, lead alto. Uh, Ernie Watts was tenor, and uh, uh, Carolyn, who got me the gig, she was there. 
uh, various different people uh, were in the saxophone section. I mean, sometimes uh, Frank West would sit in, sometimes Frank Foster. I was like, oh my gosh. So Ed Shaughnessy was still playing drums. Joel DeBartolo from the show was on bass. Uh, Ross Tompkins on piano. Um, Ernie Tack was still bass trombonist in the trombone section. Uh, what an incredible group of musicians. Oh. And just being around that collective wisdom was amazing. Yeah, one of the greatest bands, I mean, ever. Yeah.